Hello all and welcome back to another showcase. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Nora, which is what I would call a long range shuttlecraft. I designed this for use on a vanilla server, kind of to take me and a good chunk of cargo up and down to planets and back, and also just to kind of fly around anywhere from uh, like a short trip from one station to another to the surface of one planet all the way to the surface of another planet if I wanted to take it that far. So in order to achieve that somewhat lofty goal for the Nora, I decided that I wasn't going to use any mods and the only DLC that I would use is the Sparks of the Future. And that is because it has this uh, small grid door and there is no door in the vanilla game that is not DLC or modded that gives you a small grid door. And I really didn't want to mess with subgrids because they make printing an absolute nightmare and I wanted to make it on the vanilla server. The other thing that I decided to give the Nora is the ability to fly in both space and atmosphere without the use of hydrogen. I really wanted it to be able to conserve fuel. So while it is significantly less agile when it's not using hydrogen, it is completely capable of flying in any environment without it. Now you will need to use your hydrogen to go, say from a planet up into space, but that is the only time you absolutely need your hydrogen. For power, the Nora is primarily a battery ship. Now, that is because I intended it primarily to be a shuttle, so it's going to be going from one base to another and you can recharge its batteries at the station or the base that you're going to. It does have the capability to recharge itself with either hydrogen or uranium. There are reactors and hydrogen engines on it. However, it's going to take significantly longer to do so, so I would highly recommend taking it to a base or a ship, docking it, and recharging the batteries off of that. Now if you decide you're going to be running it entirely with the hydrogen thrusters, it doesn't need the batteries at all. It has enough power from either its reactors or its hydrogen engines to power itself and fly anywhere. Alright, let's take a look around the outside real quick. It's pretty sleek. Um, it's got a very rectangular design. It is basically a uh, functional brick with a bit of interior on the front. I think it turned out to look quite nice though with, uh, you know, basically being a brick. This shape is also extremely good for launching it out of another ship or station. It will fit very snugly, but comfortably, through a double wide gate, or if you don't have that block, or you just don't like that block, you can launch it very comfortably through six open hangar doors. For cargo capacity, the Nora has a single large cargo container, which you can see and access here from the outside. You can also access it through any of the connectors. There is a bottom connector right below it, and a side connector right here. Right below the side connector there is also an ejector and right behind this button here which turns on and off the ejector is a conveyor sorter. So you can get rid of any sort of junk that you really don't want in your ship. Jumping inside the ship here real quick I just want to show you that in order to make docking a little bit easier with a right and bottom connector I have set up remote controls and cameras in our hotbar. So I can be in my ship here I'm just controlling it normally. If I hit number six and then six again that will change me to my right controlling remote and the right looking camera. Now the camera is placed directly over the connector. So at the bottom of the screen you can see there where exactly my connector is and that makes it really easy for me to just fly up to this other ship and dock with it. And of course the bottom connector has a very similar setup. If I just hit number seven and then seven again, I will get to the bottom connector and you can see that the connector is directly above the camera in this case. The last thing worth mentioning about docking with other ships is that the Nora is completely capable of making an airtight connection with another small grid ship. Both of these yellow and black rings around the doors, along with the merge block, will allow it to merge to another small grid and make an airtight connection. Here you can see it merging with another Nora, and here you'll see I can walk in and out between the two, and it is in fact airtight. When you are done docking, all you have to do is turn off this merge block. You can either turn it off from the inside at the control seat, or you can press the button on top like so. Now let's head on inside the ship and take a look around. On the side with the ladder, there is a full airlock. If you look through to the other side, that door is not a full airlock to the interior of the ship. So whenever you're in space on a moon, on a planet without a good atmosphere, I recommend coming in through the left side of the ship. Inside the airlock, you can see here there are lights. The red light indicates that there is no air in the chamber, and you have this button here that lets you toggle between depressurize and pressurize. When the green light turns on, it's fully pressurized. Uh, I basically just leave it to depressurize when I'm using it as an airlock. 
so that I don't lose air. Now inside the airlock you also have a cryo, that is for convenience, for logging out, and any other time where you're traveling far and you just feel like having a cryo sleep. It's a nice thing to have on a small grid ship. Going the rest of the way through the airlock, you can see the doors automatically will close behind me. I never like turning around to close doors, so that's a recurring theme you'll see in all of my ships. This is the main compartment of the Nora. This is where you have your survival kit. It is set up with a little button to turn it on and off, so you can spawn elsewhere if you have forced respawn. It is set up on a timer so that it will automatically turn itself back on. I'm just going to leave it off for now. You'll see it turn on eventually. Inside here we have a connector. This is just so that you can access your large cargo container from inside the ship. The door on this side of the ship is not a full airlock and so it is going to be by default locked. The door is going to be turned off so you cannot open it and accidentally vent all the atmosphere inside your ship here. Now this button here will allow you to toggle, it will toggle both the air vent setting it to depressurize and it will allow you to open this door. And that is a safety mechanism so that when you have air in the chamber or you have it set to pressurize, you don't accidentally open the door. But if you have it set to depressurize, you can open the door as you see fit. There is also a button that will toggle that on the outside. That is what this button is for. You can see the lights changing. That's kind of your indicator of what the setting is. You could also just click the door. If it doesn't open, it means the interior is set to pressurize. If you want to come in through this side, you can just set it to depressurize, and then you will be able to open the door. Now, the reason the door is automatically closing is because I have all the air vents on the interior here set up so that when the ship loses pressure, all the doors close. That's kind of just a safety mechanism so that if you do something silly and you, like, open that, all the doors on the ship will close, you'll stop just venting atmosphere, and if there's anyone inside the ship, they're not going to suffocate. The uh, cockpit is a completely separate airtight chamber. It has its own air vent, so if people are screwing around in this chamber and they let all the air out, the person driving it is not going to suffer for that. Now welcome down to the planet where we are going to take the Nora for a bit of a test drive. But before we do that, I want to show you a little bit of the quality of life around the ship. First of all, we've got a ladder that is easy to access and climb on top from the ground for those of us who don't use jetpacks. If you want to access the cargo, you have three options from outside. You can access the cargo, the large cargo, from the box itself from this connector or from the bottom and usually one or two of those will be open so you don't have to climb around or go inside to get to the cargo. If you do want to access it from inside you can always lock your door open access it that way or walk through the doors over there and access it. So it's not terribly difficult to do. Getting in and out is very easy. You just walk up and hop as you're going towards it. It doesn't take really uh, particular timing or anything and you can do it when the door is closed and then open the door so that's extremely easy there are also cameras facing every direction on this ship if you are someone who plays first person only the first person view from inside the ship is rather nice i must say you have plenty of field of vision and if you go to control set 4 you can look at all the cameras left forwards right and then behind us above us and below us. So those are all the different camera options. Before we take off, there is one more thing I want to note about getting into the cockpit. I would recommend if you do not want to get out of the cockpit and end up outside the ship, which some of you might want to do, you should get into the cockpit from inside this room. Make sure you are completely outside of the door block because if you are on the other side of the door or in the door and the door closes, when you get out of the cockpit here, you will get out of the ship as well. Let me just show you what that looks like. I'm going to get in here, we'll go to doors, make sure they're all closed, and then when I get out, I'm going to be outside the ship. Now there are cases where you might want that to happen, but generally speaking you don't want that to happen, and the easiest way to resolve that is to make sure you are completely inside this room so just walk in until you hit the chair and then get in the chair and then whenever you get out of the chair you'll get out right in this little nook here and you won't end up outside your ship all right 
let's take this off and go for a little bit of a test flight. As you can see, it's got pretty good kick when I'm using both the hydrogen and atmospheric thrusters. It flies around very comfortably. We'll just fly it in first person view. I kind of like to, to fly from this view myself. Now I can switch my control bar and I can turn off all of my hydrogen thrusters. As you can see, they are now all off and I am still flying relatively comfortably. Now, I don't have a whole lot of thrust for non-hydrogen in any direction but forwards and up. So if you want to fly around, you're going to have to fly like an actual airplane and bank and turn. And Honestly, I find it kind of immersive to fly like this. So I have no issue with the fact that I have low reversing thrust or side thrust, but it takes a little bit of getting used to. If you do want to fly with your hydrogen, you can fly with just hydrogen. You can see I turned off all my atmospheric thrusters. There are no plumes coming out of them. I generally don't turn off my ion thrusters because they do help a little bit and they, they really just don't take much power when you're on a planet and they're not very effective. So you're not really wasting anything just leaving them on. Kind of the same for uh, atmospheric thrusters. Like I, I pretty much just leave them on. Unless you're having power issues, if you don't have your batteries fully charged. So I'm just gonna flip my batteries off for now. See how I'm running into uh, full battery usage? If I turn my atmospheric thrusters off, now I'm just comfortably, oh, I actually do max out, but that's because I have my ion thrusters on as well. If I turn my ion thrusters off and my atmospheric thrusters off, I now am running entirely on my um, hydrogen engines, well actually my hydrogen engines are off. <laughs> I'm running entirely off my reactors right now, but I can also just run entirely off my hydrogen engines, as you can see. So if you do want to build the ship and fly it to space, all you need is the hydrogen ability, and just mine some ice, fill it up, and you can fly the ship around just fine. The other stuff is kind of just for convenience and for a little bit added uh, control. So I'm going to turn my batteries back on. I'm going to turn just everything on, basically. I actually leave my hydrogen engines off, generally, to use that hydrogen for fuel instead. And I have pretty good control over the ship. I actually really like the way this flies. I flew this uh, around Pertam quite a bit, and I actually took it down into one of those big ravines, and I was able to fly around in the ravine with the ship. And it's, it's actually agile enough to pull something like that off, which is kind of cool. Now we're getting some weather, which is a great time to talk about uh, the offensive and defensive capabilities of the ship, so like ship weapons. First of all, the weapons it has available to it is railguns. It has two railguns locked up in the top right above the cockpit. Um, I don't really recommend this as a combat ship because it is made out of light armor blocks and uh, it's small grid so any sort of large grid weapon is just going to tear it to shreds but you do have a couple rail guns just to play with um, mostly for fun and uh, if you want to use your camera you can kind of zoom in and uh, get a good look at where your rail guns are going to go which is kind of neat it also has a single gatling turret uh, right up on top there. It's kind of just for protection for people that like to have wolves or spiders on. It'll, it'll take care of anything like that that's coming around you. It doesn't give you full coverage, so usually I'd like to put two at least, one on the top, one on the bottom, or one on the left, one on the right, and then it gives you coverage against players flying in towards you and trying to grind your ship down and do weird things. But one is better than none, so you've got that one Gatling turret up top there. For decoy blocks, um, I'll put arrows on the screen right now, and that is where the decoy blocks are. They are put somewhere where it's not close to uh, anything important in your ship. They're at least one armor block away from anything vital, so when you do eventually get struck by lightning, flying in the fog, or flying in a storm, it's not going to hit anything vital and your ship isn't going to fall out of the sky. Alright, we got rid of the fog here, that was a little bit annoying. The last thing I want to say about combat is that the ship is set up with a automatic target lock detection warning and prep system. So in the cockpit you have here 
a uh, setup actions thing, and I have it set to when you get target locked, it triggers one timer block. When you get untarget locked, it triggers another one. And what these timer blocks do is they turn on all my thrusters, all my gyros, all my power production, they turn on my turrets, they turn off all my lights, they turn on my survival kit. They basically just get me 100% prepared for battle as soon as I get target locked so that I don't have to deal with doing anything myself and so that I know when I get target locked. I also have um, this little light here turns on and it starts blinking and there's a siren that goes off. So when I get target locked, I know I'm getting target locked and my ship is automatically 100% prepared for evasive maneuvers or for getting engaged in combat. The last thing I want to try here is I'm um, just gonna pull the parachutes. I, I just turned my inertia dampeners off, kind of flying in a random direction. Of course, I was flying up. Let's get going down. Doesn't really matter, but I'll illustrate this a little bit better. Now, I'm not on my hot bar set for my parachutes, but I always put it in the same place. So I just press control three and three, and that will automatically open my parachutes. I don't have to worry about figuring out where they are. They are always in the same place, something I definitely recommend everyone starts doing is using parachutes and always putting them on the same key. So you'll see when we land here, it's set up so that I land a little bit nose heavy because the majority of my important blocks are not in the nose of my ship. Yes, that's where I control the ship from, but if all of this crunches, basically nothing important has broken. So that's why I'm having it land a little bit front heavy and also because the cargo is slightly towards the back of the ship and generally you will be carrying some cargo, so you will land a little bit more level when you have cargo in your ship. Now that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about for the Nora. I hope you enjoyed, and as we go in to land here one last time, if you would hit that like button, consider subscribing, you know, do the things. If you want to see more videos like this one, if you want to see more ships like this one, there will be more coming out, and if you don't want to miss them, that's an easy way to do so. Either way, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.